Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Michael Essick live stream. We are 3 p.m. UK time. Merry Christmas to you all. Let's see who we've got here. If you can let me know where you're watching from and uh, I'll give you a shout out. First question or comment was HD video test one. This live stream will be available as a normal YouTube video. Yes, it will. Animatris, hello and good day to you. Jacqueline uh, is here. Happy Christmas to you. Ray says hi and he has some Christmas tree emojis, which is very nice. Kevin, good morning to you. Kevin, Eddie is here. Good evening. Evil Bit, good morning. Grey Elephant Club from Cleveland, Ohio. And Holloway is here. Rob Rowan is here from South Africa, wishing you all a peaceful festive season and a prosperous 2020. Couldn't have said it better myself, Rob. Angie says hello. Otter Things is here from Buffalo. Vivian from uh, a snowy New York City. And Crystal from Edmondson, Alberta. Uh, F. Molina from Nicaragua. Cool. Inkfish from Colorado. And Holloway is from Augusta in Georgia. Ron from Michigan. Sylvia from Germany. Don from Mayberry, North Carolina, and Facebook user. Hello to you. Lance Gambis from Florida. Cool. Um, wonderful. Thank you guys for joining me today. Captain Tigra from Ural Mountains in Russia. Now that sounds cool. Um, Hassan from Morocco is here too. So um, thank you for joining me. Wonderful. This is going to be the last live stream of 2020. Um, Paper Dog, good afternoon from Austria. Happy to have you here as well, Paper Dog. Ilka from Germany and Chris from Long Island is here too. So yeah, this is our last live stream, sadly, of 2020. Um, we will be back in 2021, but I'm going to take a break for two weeks. So this is going to be our last session for a while. Barbara from NYC, Manash from India. Cool. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, today we're going to do a kind of recap of 2020, look at some lessons and some 2021 predictions. So I'm gonna have a look at print-on-demand sites, print-on-demand companies, and give you my thoughts on maybe what might we might see in 2021, um, both short-term and more long-term as well. So uh, Sarah says, hi, from snowy Vermont. And Don says, that's okay, let's get 2020 over with. Yeah, couldn't agree more, Don. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So if you could, if you're watching uh, live, if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe, that would be wonderful. Uh, today's plan, like I said, 2020 versus 2021, we'll look at print-on-demand sites like Redbubble, Merch by Amazon and such. We'll also look at some print-on-demand fulfillment companies like Printful and Printify. And uh, we'll look at some wider trends in the general space that might be relevant for us in 2021. Uh, Sue says hi, and Kia says hi from NYC, and Eric Cantona, the king himself, is here too. Okay, so as usual, please do ask questions as I go. I've kind of, this this uh, I've put slides together, but it's a bit of a scramble because I've just tried to split all my ideas out onto the slides. Your questions will be very helpful, I think, in in getting some value out of today, um, because I think there's questions questions you'll have about particular platforms and stuff, which I haven't been, I haven't gone into in detail, but if you ask me about them, I'll be able to give you my opinion on them. So do ask questions as we go throughout. I will take questions um, just as we get through this. Dina from Ghent and Dia Suisong from St. Louis, Missouri. Hello to you. Dan from Texas and hello to you, Learn Hair and Do. And Mark from Georgia, the country, not the state. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. Do ask your questions as we go. It is the last live stream until we get into the new year. So keep your eye on your inbox. I'll be posting updates on um, when I'm starting going live again. Karen from Eastbourne is here too. Thank you. Hello, Karen. Okay. And yes, today um, I am going to be giving away three Michael Essex t-shirts. You can see one in the background behind me. I've got another couple here. We have three Michael Essex t-shirts to give away. You can see very nice, big, classic Michael Essick logo design. Uh, these are all size medium, I'm afraid. Um, so if you're, if you, if you don't wear a size medium or you don't have a friend who's a size medium, um, just be aware of that. But I've got three medium sized T-shirts to give away. Also, going to give away uh, five sets of stickers as well. So for your chance to win, um, I have a survey up at michaelessick.com forward slash win. If you fill in that survey. Give me your email address. Give me your address. I'll put everyone into a prize draw, and then I'll pick a winner, and I'll announce them by Tuesday next week. So 
Um, michaelessig.com forward slash win. If you want to get in on that, you can see the uh, the address up there. Uh, you don't have to do that now, of course. You can do it anytime uh, within the next few days. Uh, just a simple survey so I can get your guys' opinions, see where you guys are at, um, mainly to get your as well your opinions on what you'd like to see me talk and teach about next year. That would be really helpful. So it's not a big survey. won't take you long to do. Uh, michaelessig.com forward slash win to get access to that. And also, if you go and do that, you'll find access to the data that I'm looking at today. So this is my spreadsheet, which has traffic data and stuff on print-on-demand sites and print-on-demand companies. So if you'd like to get access to this and just use it for your own purposes, you'll find a link to this if you go and fill in that survey. So um, just a quick plug for that there. Uh, and then let's get into it. A few comments coming in. Let me get through some of these. Thomas says, hi from Reading. Hello to you, Thomas. Andrew, is doing POD with Shopify and Printful worth doing in 2021? Um, that is a, a very open-ended question, Andrew, and I really think it's too open-ended uh, to be, to be to, for me to give you a meaningful answer. Um, Shopify is a platform on which you can sell almost anything, and Printful is a platform on which you can print almost anything these days. Um, it's you know, I don't know what you're selling, what kind of designs you have, what kind of community you're going after, what kind of market you're targeting. Um, so that is too open-ended. Um, there will be plenty of people in 2021 who start a Shopify store and try to sell on Printful, and they will crash and burn, and it will be a waste of their time and effort. There will be other people, I'm sure, who will start a Shopify and a Printful integration in 2021, and in five years, they will have a incredibly big, uh, strong business. So the variable is not Shopify and Printful. Those are just like tools. It's like saying, you know, should I use a hammer or a screwdriver or whatever? You know, in the right hands, those tools are going to be really good. In the wrong hands, they're going to fail. And the question is not the tools. It's more a, a lot of other big, uh, big things, ideas, designs, markets, and stuff like that. Raymond, good morning from Baltimore. Pierre, hello from Montreal. Um, Vernon Edu, cute T-shirt. Yes, I'm a medium. Cool. Okay, then you could be in with that one. Kenneth. Hi, Michael. Thanks to you, I finally got my first sale. Thanks, man, for all the tips. No problem. Thank you, Kenneth. That's what we like to hear about. Uh, Betty says, good morning. Dina says, oh, bummer. Uh, Lance says, medium was my pre-pandemic size. Uh, Tomotori from Lithuania is here. Hello to you. Uh, Dina, medium when I was 12. Oh, sorry, guys. Maybe you have kids or you have a family member who would look nice in a, in a Michael Essex t-shirt. Amira from Georgia is here. Rob, Michael, you mentioned a course running early in 2021. Do you have any information on the content and cost? Um, not yet. Well, Rob, it will be the Ideas Workshop. We'll be opening again in January. If you go to Ideas Workshop, sorry, if you go to michaelessig.com forward slash ideas, you'll be able to sign up and you'll be the first to, to know when the, when the uh, course is available again. But I don't have information right now about the cost. I'm currently updating the course and adding new stuff. Uh, and I'll be sharing information in January when that's uh, available. Uh, learn how and do. Will your book help me to generate ideas for T-shirt ideas? And how much could I make per month? Thanks so very much. Um, I can answer your first question with a definitive yes, absolutely, 100%. My book, uh, the little book of T-shirt ideas, will definitely help you generate ideas for T-shirts. That's all this book does. It does nothing else. That's all it does. It just helps you generate ideas for T-shirts. Look, it's got pictures. It's got loads of text. It's got a couple of introductory chapters. It's full of that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, absolutely. How much could you make per month? That is, again, a very open-ended question. Some people are not very good at um, this, uh, this line of work. And other people make uh, tens of thousands a month or even more than that. So um, it really depends. But I can certainly answer yes to the first part of your question. Thomas, I bought your course, but I haven't activated it yet. Hope that's okay. Uh, yes, Thomas, you have, um, if you're talking about the Ideas Workshop, you have 12 months access to it. Uh, Nuno, hi from Portugal. Philippa, at the moment, I put every design I make onto every POD site I use. Is it better to put certain designs on certain sites instead of blasting the same design everywhere? Uh, Philippa, the short answer I think is yes, uh, going forwards. I'm going to talk about that in a second here. Um, but yeah, I think the short answer is yes. It, it, I would say a bit more focus on where you're selling and, and why probably leads to better results long term. Um, I think in the past, spraying everything everywhere maybe has done okay for people. But I think going forwards, it, it makes more sense to, to be a bit more thoughtful about where you're placing stuff. 
Arthur says, hello and happy holidays. Thomas is a medium. Bo says, hello, Michael. Karen says, has anyone had any success with Spreadshirt? Um, I haven't, Karen. Um, Spreadshirt is in my list of POD data here, so we'll look at that in a second. Um, Joanne, happy pre-boxing day, Michael. Hi from New Jersey. Uh, Tomatore, I got your book as a Christmas present. Planning to read it this weekend. Cool. Angie, I know you sell on Etsy. Have you any, any thoughts on Amazon Handmade, a worthwhile platform to use? Um, I, I don't, I, I've not personally got much experience with Amazon Handmade. It seems to me from, from where I'm standing that Amazon Handmade hasn't really made much of a dent. I, I think that was Amazon's attempt to get in on Etsy. And from what I can see, it's not really worked. Etsy is still the dominant player in that space. So, um, you know, there may be routes and ways to get things working for you on Amazon Handmade. I'm not saying it doesn't work for people, but I haven't played with it, so I can't give you any opinion on it. I can say that Etsy has been doing very well this year, and I think that's testament to their strength as a brand. Uh, you know, they suck people in um, because they are a brand name that people recognize in the same way that Amazon does, but I think Etsy is more that handmade deal, so they've done quite well this year. Thomas has sold six items and he's yet to get paid. Um, Learn hair and do. I think I want to start with Redbubble, Teespring, and Merch by Amazon. Is that okay? Stay tuned because we're going to talk about that right now. And N Holloway says, in terms of keywords, do you try to grab them from Google or do you shoot for terms popular on a particular marketplace? Uh, personally, N Holloway, I just keep it focused on the design that I'm creating. I create you know, original designs and then I try to do the most relevant keywords for that design to give them the best possible chance. Um, if it was a trend or something, then I would use Google. I sometimes use something like Google Trends to figure out exactly what the best terms to use might be. Um, so yeah, Lance says his wife sells custom jewelry on Amazon Handmade and does well, not as good as Etsy. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably true. Sue says, yeah, Etsy and Abdusalam sent Amazon Handmade rocks. You need to be a real handmade business to enter. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, oh, one more. Michael, do you find that free shipping works better than having it extra on Etsy? I think Etsy are trying to push people that way with, uh, with free shipping. They're trying to get people to... So go with the free shipping um, thing. So yeah, we I think we offer now free shipping on our store. I wouldn't say it necessarily has made a massive difference, but I think people do respond well to um, to free shipping wherever it might be. So uh, yeah, not a big thing in either way. Otter things, does POD count as handmade? Uh, don't know when it comes to Amazon handmade, but certainly with Etsy, you can get away with it. All right, let's dive in here because I want to get through these slides. Uh, just a quick intro, yes. Um, who this is for, if you're watching, you know no idea what this is about. I'm a t-shirt designer, that's my bread and butter. So this is primarily for people who are designing for products like t-shirts, maybe posters and things like that and selling them or licensing their art online. So if you're a t-shirt designer or you want to be or you're selling prints on demand, maybe through Etsy or Shopify or your own merch, then hopefully this will be an interesting session for you. And yeah, really my goal overall long-term is to build a solid business, a sustainable business through your designs. And I've been able to do that over the past several years. I've been lucky enough to do that through creating original designs and selling them on Redbubble and Etsy and Merch by Amazon and Shopify and all these places. So that's really my, um, my goal for these sessions. So 2020 lessons. Uh, I'll just read this one from Thomas. I'm on Redbubble, TP, SS, da, 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 da. Not sure as I've sold six items. They told me how much they owe me, but dashboard says otherwise, not sure about SS. Okay, and Abdusalam says no POD, POD is not okay for handmade on Amazon. So there you go. Okay, a couple of big headline 2020 lessons. Um, I think we've seen, and I kind of predicted this last year, or it's been a long-term trend anyway, uh, the, the IP clamp down, the clamp down on um, IP infringing designs, designs that are referencing, whether it's movies or bands or games or whatever it might be, there's been there's been more movement on that this year. It's picked up a bit. So we've seen mainstream media coverage on this. There's been a big there was a big article earlier in the year on Wired uh, that really went deep into this and all the kind of infringement that's going on on Redbubble and other kind of sites like that. Um, we've seen FB restrictions. So sites like Matifi they got uh, hit with FB ad blocks and stuff like that. A few others have, have reported similar things. So it just seems like the general mood music is is really started to change around copyright infringing stuff and i think what's happening is a lot of um 
IP owners, whether those are mu movie studios or uh, record labels or games producers or whatever it might be, they're waking up to the fact that print on demand exists. They're beginning to see it and notice it and they're clamping down. And that's that's happening across Redbubble and TeePublic and not just those platforms, but also on advertising platforms like Facebook. So I think that's just one big thing that we've con continued to see in 2020. What that means for you is if you're if you're if you are selling designs that are referencing movies and stuff like that, then um, then don't take them down or get get ready for them to be removed um, because I think that's what um, that's what we'll see more of as we progress. It'll be harder and harder to do anything that's referencing a movie or something that should be officially licensed but isn't. That's going to get removed. Um, Okay, a couple of comments here. Facebook user, do you list the same designs from Merch by Amazon to Etsy and do you use the same brand? Um, I do list the same designs, yes. Uh, my Etsy store is more curated than my Merch by Amazon account, which has thousands of designs on, um, or several thousands of designs on. Our Etsy store has a, a thousand something designs on. So it is more curated. Um, so yeah. Manash, doing good with T Public, getting sales every day or every alternative day. Um, has Redbubble as well uploaded 300 plus designs getting less views? I'm uploading the same designs in Redbubble, but no sales. Um, what do you suggest about Redbubble as I have evergreen designs in TeePublic? Okay, we'll get into that in a second, Manash, because we will dive into some of those things. Um, other big headline lesson, POD is not slowing down. Merch by Amazon are going to invest uh, 400 million, I think, in new core neat printers over the next few years. Uh, there have been a lot of new fulfillment companies entering the space. There has been big growth on Redbubble and Etsy and other platforms like that. So I think what we have seen in general across 2020 is a lot of print-on-demand activity. Um, and I think that's just going to continue. I think, you know, you've seen in the past year, people have said that we've had 10 years of, of growth or 10 years of advancement in about a year. Everything's been you know, squashed down. And that certainly seems to be the case with print on demand. We've seen big growth in Redbubble and other sites like that. And a lot of indication that this is not changing, that there is going to be a major shift away from, um, you know, retail and e-commerce where you're stocking screen printed shirts and POD is going to be really taking over the market if it hasn't already. Um, so yeah, more growth across the board. I think this is a growth, a growth industry overall. And then what's my last comment here? Wait for that little thing to disappear. It's not disappearing. <laughs> uh, POD has some drawbacks. Yes, we've seen like slowdowns earlier this year. Printful, uh, Redbubble, they all had to close doors and stuff for a while and they had to you know, rearrange stuff. There was months, Merch by Amazon closed its doors. There was whole months when the pandemic shut everything down. Obviously that was not an easy thing to predict. That was kind of a once in a lifetime hopefully once in a lifetime event, but it shows that there are, are some drawbacks there. I mean, for example, if I did have a load of screen printed t-shirts in my house, I could have continued selling, um, in theory, at least on Etsy or something like that. Um, but if you're relying fully on Printful or Printify or some other third party and they have to close their doors, there are some drawbacks there. So there's, there's kind of, you know, swings and roundabouts, but I think overall it's been a good year for, for prints on demand. Okay. Before we dive into the print-on-demand sites, uh, Animatris Joe says, "How about movie parodies? Are they going to be put? Are they going to put it down even if it's a parody?" Yeah, the thing about parody is parody is just a a very broad term, and it can mean a lot of things. And there's no definitive legal definition of what constitutes a parody. So, um, in general, if your my rule of thumb is, if your design references in any way or relies on IP that is not yours then it's it's ultimately unsafe. And that doesn't mean that you're going to get sued. It usually means eventually it'll get taken down, especially if it becomes a big seller. So you're kind of in that uh, gray, you know, you don't want things to get too big because they're going to get taken down. Um, so yeah, it's just a stupid, it's a, it's a weird kind of business to run. Um, you know, I started out doing designs that were referencing IP, not all my designs, but I certainly have had some over the years. And slowly they've just gone down and down and down. And it, it would have been much better if I had to spend that time early on building up my own brand, creating more original designs, building series of designs and little mini brands and stuff, rather than trying to play off whatever was popular at the time. So yeah. Um, Nuno, do you have any advice to design better? Um, yeah, I have a book, uh, The Little Book of T-Shirt Ideas, which you can get at michaelessick.com forward slash book. 
And I have a whole series of videos. I actually set up my YouTube channel with some playlists recently. So I have sessions on um, on fonts, on layouts, and all sorts. So go and check that out. Uh, Don says, POD has quality control issues. It does, Don. That's a good point. I think we've seen, or certainly I've seen, um, some big leaps forward in quality over the past year or two. And I think that's going to continue. And I think 2021 and beyond, we're going to see print on demand, the, the actual print quality, just get better and better until there's barely a difference between that and screen printing. Um, there's still a, a wide range of quality issues with print on demand. And I'll talk about that in a bit. But but yeah, there certainly are, are issues there, but I think it's it's going in the right direction. Excuse me. Uh, Lance is asking about Cafe Press. I will let's dive into this. So print on demand sites in 2020. Um, let me make this big and you can take a look. So this is print on demand sites. So what I've done here is I've taken um, the past six months of traffic data. So here you can this is this is traffic data for the big POD sites. Let me just give a definition quickly. POD sites means a website where you can go and upload designs and they will fulfill and sell and pay you a royalty. So this is not Etsy where you have to use Printful or something to fulfill. These are sites that will take care of everything for you. You just go and upload a design. You don't have to deal with customers or anything. You just go and upload and then you walk away. So that's what I mean by print on demand sites. So these are sites like Redbubble, Teespring, Zazzle, TeePublic, and so on. Now there's lots of variables in these, these sites and um, I'll, I'll go through the big ones, I think, and compare those and show you some, some details on those. But this is traffic for the last six months, which was uh, from SimilarWeb. So you can see the big daddy of them all is Redbubble. It's had a good year overall. Um, it's actually not had a massive, if I just scroll a little bit here. Um, okay, so you can see this is Redbubble's, let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Uh, you can see Redbubble's Google trend data is uh, pretty decent for the year. It's certainly grown over this year. It had a big spike around the middle of the year, around July, and then it dipped back down again. But it's still looking, you know, like a good a good year for Red Bull. That's reflected in their share price as well. So they're the big beast in the room when it comes to print on demand sites. Um, Teespring are, are a bit of a anomaly in that they're not really a site that has massive organic traffic. So they're not a site that. Even though they have a lot of traffic, very little of that traffic is organic, which means that if you list a design on there, you're usually going to have to drive traffic yourself if you want to see sales on, on Teespring. So the reason Teespring is so big is because they have the stores for a lot of YouTubers, celebrities, influencers, and things like that, and brands. So they get a lot of traffic because of that. They're not actually really comparable to Redbubble because Redbubble is a monster when it comes to organic traffic. Um, Zazzle is the big surprise when I looked through some of these stats. They've actually had a really good year, Zazzle, and they've been climbing. The thing about Zazzle is, though, they're actually not that great um, for for most artists because they the things they rank for and where they get their traffic from is really big, broad terms like Christmas cards, even things like business cards and invitations. So it's stuff that's not really that relevant to us. So we can kind of... I mean, I know some people do sell on Zazzle and do very well, but for my kind, I've never really done that great on Zazzle. Um, but you can see they do have quite a decent amount of traffic. They're, you know, they're not gaining on Red Bull, but they've, they've done well. I'm surprised, to be honest, with Zazzle. Number four on the total traffic numbers is TeePublic, and they've had a good year as well. Um, if you look over here, uh, or in fact, I have some slides here on TeePublic. So here's TeePublic. This year in blue. Oh, sorry, this is the past five years of Tea Public. Tea Public this year. This is the first year they have overtaken um, Society Six and Teespring. So that means that brand searches, people going to Google and searching for Tea Public, right now in November um, or November December uh, 2020, Tea Public is being searched more than Society Six and more than Teespring. So what that says to me is Tea, tea Public have done a pretty decent job of growing their brand over the past few years. And now they're, they're reaping the benefits of that. And we're seeing this massive spike towards the end of the year here. So obviously that's reflective of people buying gifts and stuff for quarter four, but 
in order for you to search for tea public, you have to know something about them. You have to know their name. You have to go looking for the site. And that's exactly what people are doing here. So I think this is a good indication of maybe direction of travel for tea public. I think they've, they've done very well over the past several years with organic traffic. And now they're, they've basically been able to leverage that and become a kind of brand name that people recognize and actually search for in the first place. So that's tea public. They've been doing pretty well over the past year. Um, they do have, however, there's a bit of a weakness in Tee Public. Here we go. I'll just go into this one. This is Tee Public's organic search um, results. So how many uh, visits they get via organic traffic. And you can see this is from 2016. So this, is, this was a great growth for a bit. And then they kind of dipped. But then they really had a massive year between 2019 to the end of 2020. So about this time last year when it was around here, T Public were would, would doing fantastic. You know, they were their organic growth was humongous. It looks to me like they've been pretty hard Google slapped at some point, um, you know, just around the start of the year and then massively, I don't know what that would be, like May, June time or something. Um, so I think what happened with T Public is they they got a bit of a spanking from Google for some reason, and um their organic search has started to really fall off. So the interesting thing with Tee Public is they they've managed to maintain their um, their brand searches, even though organic traffic has been going down. So they basically managed to grow even though their organic traffic has, has fallen off. So I think Tee Public, um, you know, they're still one of my one of my favorite recommended sites, especially for the kind of designs I do. Um, and I'll, I'll get into kind of my recommendations in a second, but they're probably the other one. The other the other one I pull out for a bit of um, notice is Displate. This is a site I've been, I mentioned in my Prints on Demand sites blog earlier this year. They are, this one down here in blue, they've, they've seen some pretty good growth. I think I've got a slide on them here as well. Yeah, so here you can see, if we add Displate to that previous one, so this is Displate here in green. They actually, we're tracking pretty close with TeePublic. They actually overtook TeePublic I guess that would be around October time. Dip back down a bit now, but Display, if you don't know, they sell these big metal posters and um, they've been having a great run. Um, if you look at Display for the past five years, this is uh, Display compared to a few others, they kind of track pretty closely with TeePublic. So um, that would be the other one to kind of, I don't know, give a bit more attention to perhaps as well if you're not already is Display. So, um, as I mentioned before, if you go to michaelessig.com forward slash win, you can get access to this, this data and you can see it. What I've got here is um, data on a lot of different stuff, the organic trends and things. Um, but I've also got this, I'll highlight this column here so you can find it easily. But what is this site best for? Why would you want to sell on this site rather than any of the others? And a few of these, which are pretty good on traffic and pretty good on organic traffic, sites like Fine Art America, Displate, um, Society6 still holding up pretty well and they are mainly for like posters and wall art and that kind of thing and uh, they're holding their own they're doing quite well on those on those fronts so I think if you're doing designs that work well on posters or wall art and stuff then um, worth checking out those those sites okay I know that was a bit of a, a, a brain dump of stuff but uh, let me take some comments here um and you can see here, this is this, I should say, this is sorted by kind of traffic, organic and uh, traffic over the last six months. So you can see really Redbubble obviously leading the field. Zazzle are there if you want to play with them. Then it's T Public, then it's I think that's Society Six, and then Fine Art America, then Display, Spreadshirt are down here, Cafe Press are even below them. So so yeah, there's there's some sites that it's up to you whether you want to fool with them. Um I would say test everything out yourself, but personally, I would be sticking to stuff that's that's got a good 12-month trend and a good five-year trend. So that's Redbubble, that's TeePublic, uh, Displate, Fine Art America's done pretty good on the five-year trend, not so great in the 12-month, but you get the idea, and you can uh, grab this data and have a look at yourself anyway. Okay, Ron, T-Fury seems to feature plenty of IP-based designs that I assume are licensed. Um, I wouldn't necessarily assume that they are wrong. They, they, some of them could be. So uh, they have done officially licensed um, stuff, but um, but 
I wouldn't necessarily assume that they are. No, you know, not necessarily. Uh, RR, can we download that POD data? Yes, you can go to michaelessig.com forward slash win. Uh, there's a survey there. If you fill that in for me, then there's a link on the back end of that so you can get access to this. And then you can make your own copy. If you go to file, make a copy, you'll be able to edit it as well. Uh, Sylvia says, Redbubble writes in their invoices, please note you are responsible for accounting for indirect sales tax. How do you make it work paying sales tax worldwide? Um, I, that's a massive subject, Sylvia, that I won't be able to get into. Um, I do think Redbubble's tax situation is confusing, and I think Redbubble are to blame for some of that. Um, but I would just recommend that you talk with an account, your accountant, if you don't have one, or try and get someone who's a, an expert because the rules are so complicated based on where you're based. For example, here in the UK, we don't pay tax on royalties. The definition of royalty is quite complicated. I know Redbubble doesn't technically pay royalties, but anyway, I say all that to say that I'm not an accountant. I would recommend you go and, and talk through it with uh, someone who knows their stuff, because I certainly am not an expert in that space. Bo, could you please tell us again the name of the site from which you gathered your stats? Yeah, so the, the traffic stats were gathered from SimilarWeb, and the organic data has been gathered from Ahrefs. Kenneth, what if the organic search is mostly sellers and not buyers? Um, yeah, uh, that could certainly be, could be an issue. I think that's probably the issue with something like Teespring. Um, but I think for for a lot of these um, kind of sites, it's, you know, are sellers Googling Redbubble um, more than buyers? I don't think that's that's the case. Uh, but it's, it could be something, Kenneth, that you want to bear in mind. Ron says, I seem to do best on TeePublic. High organic search results, low margins. Yeah, me too, uh, Ron. Mutant Chisel, I think Redbubble bought TeePublic. That might explain the growth. Um, they did buy TeePublic um, in 2019. But uh, T Public was already going great guns. If you look at their, um, their kind of five year trajectory, oh, that's 12 months. So that's five years. You can see T Public, you know, still doing pretty well. So yeah, I think I think Red Bull were buying T Public was a very smart move. Inkfish, what sites would be best for cute animal designs for kids? I'll share my thoughts on that in a second. Uh, Facebook user, I'm just starting out. Would you recommend both an Etsy store and an independent site? Um, I think I'm going to answer those questions. So bear with me here. Um, so yeah, 2020 winners, uh, Redbubble saw a great, great big growth this year. Uh, Merch by Amazon, which I haven't even mentioned here because it's hard to compare stats of Merch by Amazon with other places. But Merch by Amazon launched a lot of new products this year, phone cases, pillows. They launched all the products for all the marketplaces. They launched Germany, France, and loads of other places. Um, so so Merch by Amazon had a great year as well. And Merch by Amazon have been, um, or Amazon, I should say, have obviously had a big year of growth. And I think that's going to keep Amazon in pole position going forward. T Public, I think we've seen brand growth. So where they have fallen off in organic, they they seem to be picking up and becoming a bit more of a brand that people search for. So I think that's good for them. Uh, Display as well have had a really good year. So those are my main 2020 winners. Sites I would personally go with. and bearing in mind my designs are funny puns funny designs cute designs that kind of stuff i would go with redbubble they're the gorilla in the room much by amazon you can't really afford to ignore it um you know much by amazon is a a kind of two-headed beast it's a massive opportunity with huge eyeballs the opportunity to get lots and lots of eyeballs on your work it's also the most competitive in terms of you know painting big labels on your back with BSRs, copycats and stuff like that. But it's, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing, um, I wouldn't be doing anyone a favor if I pretended that Merch by Amazon wasn't a great place to sell and license your designs. Um, T Public would then be my number three. And then especially if you're designing posters and stuff, I would go with Society6, Fine Art America, Display. I would check all of those out. Um, and then Threadless, especially if you're trying to build something of a brand, Threadless is not massive on organic. It's not massive, you know, in terms of search. But the thing Threadless has is they have these opportunities for you to get licensed offline and to get your designs in Hot Topics and Spencers and stuff like that. So I've had designs this year that have been picked up by Threadless. They've then gone on to be in their uh, offline licensing program. And that's not something that's 
really something that any of the other sites focus on or have an opportunity for you to do. So that's why I recommend Threadless if you're doing that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else have we got? Thomas, I have 1,300 designs on Rebel daily sales, only one to three sales a day. Am I doing well bearing in mind number of designs? Um, I would say probably not that great, Thomas, based on my experience, but um, but what do you, you know, it all depends on the nature of your designs and stuff. And without seeing them and without um, having data, it's very hard to give, give any advice that would really help you on that front. Lance, what is the link to the Google sheet with the POD comparison? MyColassic.com forward slash win. Go there, fill in the survey, give me a few pointers and comments and stuff for next year. And I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link to the spreadsheet. Um, Richie, can you get found on Etsy or any of these sites without paid advertising? Yes. Um, that's why I recommend these. Redbubble, Merch, TeePublic, these are all the sites that have good organic traffic and can get you in front of people. Um, same with Society6, not so much with Threadless. But yeah, these ones certainly, and Etsy as well, is definitely um, in the mix there. So yes, uh, I don't do any paid advertising, um, or very minimal anyway, and uh, most of our income is, is through organic. Aki can I can we open second account in Redbubble or Teak Public and upload same designs we already have, like mirror account? Um, I wouldn't recommend that. That sounds to me a bit spammy. And if I was Teak Public or Redbubble, I think I would probably shut you down. Doctor Geronimo, I don't know if you already answered that question. As far as you know, what can one do to get listed on Teak Public? Um, I don't know, uh, Doctor Geronimo. I know this has been a big problem this year with people not getting featured in TeePublic. I've got two things to say about that. One of them is um, the first thing to do is make sure your designs are good. And by good, I mean really high quality original designs. So not, you know, I'm a great mom, I'm the best granny or whatever, you know, something truly original and on trend. That's what TeePublic is looking for. Those are the designs they want to feature and push out there. So that's thing one. Thing two is, uh, just because it's not featured in the TeePublic search doesn't mean that it's not getting indexed by Google. So I had someone email, about, email me about this very issue last week. Um, I took a look at his TeePublic store. I looked to check if his, if his designs were indexed by Google, and they were, which means that, in theory at least, people can search on Google and find your TeePublic listing. And because TeePublic has been so good on organic, that's primarily where most of your sales are going to come from. So you don't have to be featured in the TeePublic marketplace to actually make sales. I know that sounds strange, but that's that's a big part of it. You can make sales on TeePublic without being featured there. Um, and then the third thing I'd say is, I don't know, but I will reach out to TeePublic and try and get some answers on whether they have a, a system for uh, approving artists um, and that kind of thing, because I don't think that's laid out very clearly at the moment. Susan, I'm US-based. What do you recommend for an EU POD supplier for Etsy? Um, hmm, that's a tricky one. I, we, we use um, T-shirt and Sons here in the UK. They're UK-based, um, but they're the only one I've really got much day-to-day -day, um, experience with. So yeah, T-shirt and Sons via Printify, excuse me, I'd probably go with. Irene, do you have an e-store or general store on Redbubble TeePublic? Uh, it's more general than it is niche at the moment, my Redbubble and TeePublic stores. Uh, what happened with merch? There's no tear up this month. Um, I do not control merch. Nah, shush. How about Teespring? Doesn't have very big um, organic traffic, Teespring. Um, you can see here, you know, their, their organic traffic is below Zazzle. It's below TeePublic. Um, it's similar to Society6. So, yeah, Teespring, I don't recommend it for organic um, unless you're driving traffic, unless you're uh, doing ads or you have a following, then it's not uh, the best place, I think. Okay, um, let's move on here with some more thoughts. Print-on-demand companies. So what's a print-on-demand company? Print-on-demand company is a site like Printful or Printify. These are going to be the back end, the fulfillment company to your Etsy store or to your Shopify store or to your WooCommerce store or whatever it might be. So um, there's there's... There's a few big players in the print-on-demand space, and I just named them already, Printful and Printify. Um, I thought this was an interesting graph. This is Merch by Amazon, searches for Merch by Amazon versus searches for Printify. Obviously, these are not 
competitors, but they are in the sense that sellers, designers, um, you know, maybe what was it? Pe merch by Amazon searches for Merch by Amazon peaked around 2017. So that was when uh, Merch by Amazon was a big deal. So designers were paying attention to it. They were hearing about it and they were going and signing up and looking for it. Printify has been a slow burner that has actually in 20, just around 2019, overtaken searches for Merch by Amazon. And I just think this is interesting because I think about how um, designers and sellers slowly but surely cotton on to the fact that actually I can sell stuff myself. I don't have to use Merch by Amazon. I don't even have to use Redbubble or TeePublic. I can set up my own store and build my own brand and use something like Printify or Printful. And I think this is a this is maybe an indication of that. And long term, I think that's probably where um, where things are heading. I think you know that I remember where I was when I realized that I could set up my own store, use Printful or some, or I think it was Printora at the time, and build my own brand and sell for higher prices and offer endless amounts of designs and products. You know, it was a massive wake up call. It was a big light bulb moment for me, and I think that's something that continues and people continue to have that experience and they realize that actually, yes, you get obviously loads of traffic and eyeballs from Merch by Amazon, but you're playing in their sandpit and there's obviously more interest, a longer term interest in them, perhaps long term in building your own brand. So uh, that's my thoughts on that one. Uh, Fiona says, once you get to a certain volume on Etsy, they will advertise your listings and take a cut. Yes, that's true. You cannot opt out of this. Um, fair enough, but you really need to build it into RRP. Yeah, I've seen that this year as well, Fiona. Um, T-Chip, um, on anybody's radar? I think they might be on the um, Trade Commission's radar, uh, like Ken says here. They're a cesspool. Yeah, they, they have a bad reputation, and I would not uh, recommend going with them personally. Abdus Salam, Teespring do organic if you sell a lot and they start some campaigns to be featured in some occasion. You can use hashtag to enter and Teespring added digital. So there you go. There is a way to get your get exposure via organic through T, uh, through Teespring, but you have to jump through some hoops, like Abdus Salam says there. And the Lonax says hello, hello to you. Okay, um, so print on demand companies. Um, let's have a quick look at some of the data here. This is not there's not too much to go off here because there's really only two big players and then everyone else, and that's Printful here in blue. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Printful in blue and then Printify. In terms of um, growth over the past 12 months, Printify's probably had a, a bit of a better year than Printful, though not by much. But they've both seen some, you know, they've both had a solid year. Uh, Guten has had a bit of a pickup towards the end of the year as well. Uh, they're probably number three on the list. But um, it really is a, a battle between Printful and Printify um, on that front. And obviously, Printful and Printify are not places you can sell designs. These are the companies you're going to use to fulfill. But I highlight these differences just to say that I think long-term, uh, Printify are making some, some good moves. They're, they're doing things. They, they, they've added a lot of features this year, which um, which I think make Printify a, a good system. They're, they're basically, they're, the way they work is they pit printers against one another in a kind of almost a competition way so that you can choose which printer you want to work with. And what that does is keeps prices pretty competitive. It means that they have to focus on turnaround time and stuff. And Printify have started doing things like auto routing options. So I think long-term Printify are making some good things. And I think, you know, it won't be this year, it probably won't be next year, but I think Printify are well-placed to, to challenge Printful. Printful are Great. I've used them for years and we still use them, but their prices are crazy compared to uh, Printify and others. And uh, the quality, the differences in quality are, are literally diminishing day by day. Um, I used a printer, um, a new printer last week, and the quality was incredible, better than anything I've ever got from Printful or Printify from other printers. So uh, basically all I'm saying there is who should you use, Printful or Printify? I would probably edge towards Printify for the first time this year or for 2021. Um, now, that's not saying too much because Printify, you have to go and then choose your printer. But what I like about Printify is the model that they're using. And I think you can you can start testing things out quicker with Printify and you're not being boxed in so tight like you are if you're signing up with Printful. 
So hope that makes sense. Arthur, but when you have your own store, how do you control your own inventory, i.e. t-shirt sizes? Um, Arthur, if you have your own store, like an Etsy store or a Shopify store, and you use print on demand, you don't have inventory. You hook it up with Printful or Printify, and it's all automatically fulfilled and printed on demand in the same way that it is with Redbubble and others, um, but it's now your store rather than the data all flowing through Redbubble, if that makes sense. Tomatori, what do you use to drive traffic to your own store? Um, typically, Instagram has been the best um, channel for me to drive traffic. Um, but of course, there's there's many others. There's Facebook ads. There's organic. You know, if you if you're good at SEO and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Lance. Issue with Printify is the customer service. The fact you can't deal directly with the printer, but I do use them along with Printful. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a problem with all um, printers and print on demand fulfillment companies, and um, they are. <laughs> You know, whether it's Printful or Printify, everyone's got a bad story about all of them. Like we've had prints from Printful that have been terrible. We've had prints from Printify that have been terrible. But it's really about kind of the long-term plan who you want to hook your who you, who you want to hook up with and and build a brand with. I think this is the first year that Printify have really shown um, that they have the right kind of they're making the right kind of noises and heading in the right direction and i think they can eventually challenge printful which is good you know more competition is good and i think as we go forward we'll see more tools that will make it easier for you to actually move your whole store like if we want to move our etsy store from printful to printify or back to printful because they lowered prices there'll be things that make that easier to use um ed says which printer do you use um at the moment we use a lot because obviously the christmas crunch and there's been, you know, we have to spread things out. Um, via Printify, we've been using Dream Junction and Monster Digital. They've been pretty good. Um, there will be some some new ones coming on next year, I think, which I'll be able to talk about more in 2021. But yeah, right now, Monster Digital and Dream Junction, we've been using for for most of the year, and they they've been very good. Um, sorry, I, yes, and RR Fine has asked the same question, and I think I have answered that. Um, Kenneth, which is the best alternative for Shopify? If you don't want to use Shopify, probably WooCommerce, I think, uh, personally. But I know there's others. There's Big Commerce and a few others like that. Uh, what are your thoughts about Etsy's off-site advertising? Um, no real comment because I, I haven't delved into it. Um, I'm, I'm uh, like Fiona said about Etsy, you know, forcing ads on you. Um, I. We have that, but I don't pay attention to it because they're not ads that I run. Um, so we don't do any of our own paid ads. We just do organic and let Etsy handle it. Joe is late to the party today. No problem, Joe. Okay, so let me get through a few more thoughts here. So Etsy with Printful, oh, sorry, Printify would be my first choice, then Printful. And then there's a newcomer called Spod, which is Spreadshirt's print-on-demand fulfillment company. Now, they unfortunately don't have an Etsy app, so... If you wanted to sell on Etsy with Spod, you wouldn't be able to automate it. You'd have to do it manually. Spod just has a, uh, a Shopify app at the moment. But uh, the thing about Spod is they've been very quick on turnaround time. So I placed some test orders earlier this month. Spod were the absolute quickest. And then there was um, a couple of others that were a day later than Spod and then the rest. So I just mentioned those because I think they might be worth checking out if you haven't already. They seem to be doing uh, working pretty fast over there. Um, and then just some other thoughts on marketplaces and platforms besides Etsy. There has been quite a bit of movement this year with Instagram shops and Facebook shops. Um, we've also seen Google's shopping. Google opened up Google Shopping so that you don't have to pay to list on there anymore. So basically, there's been movement. I think in general, we've seen platforms trying to at least begin to try and ch challenge Amazon in some way, shape, or form. I think it's going to be several years before anything really does challenge Amazon. But I think there are there are challenges out there. Shopify, Instagram, Facebook shops, over the long term, those would be the places that are most likely to challenge Amazon. Um, and there are ways you can set up and, and sell print-on-demand via Instagram stores, Facebook shops, and obviously with Shopify. So they, they might be worth looking into. Another thing you might want to look at 2021, wholesale. Um, if you want to sell something wholesale, there are these platforms now like Fair, Tundra, and Shopify's own one, which is called Handshake, 
these are platforms where basically if you're a retail store, you can go and look for suppliers. Now, it's not something that works with print on demand necessarily, but obviously the great thing about selling wholesale is that you don't produce anything until you've had an order for it. So, you know, if you get an order from someone on Handshake or Fair, then you have that order, they pay for the order and you send out the, the product. So you don't have to actually have, you know, stock. You don't have to hold stock. You could do, you know, whether you screen print it or use print on demand, you could then place the order. And I just think that's a potential opportunity for, for people with quality designs and stuff um, to start looking at. The, you know, wholesale has typically been something that happens in a physical way with trade shows and stuff. I think with COVID and stuff, People are moving online, and I think these kind of sites could be a big growth opportunity in the next few years as well. Okay, um, let me answer some questions. I'll get through the last of my slides, and then I'll take questions until we uh, get through to the end here. Okay, Abdul Salam, creating a brand with a POD company is like shooting your own foot. You can't control anything. Um, I don't 100% agree because I think there are – companies out there which are doing good and you can stick with them over the long term and you can see the quality improving. Um, I have seen prints this year, which is the first time I've seen prints on demand prints that challenge screen printed stuff in terms of quality. So I think it, it does depend, you know, you have to test things, you have to order a lot of samples and work with people, but um, you can, I think you can control quite a lot. And, you know, through selling on Etsy and Shopify for many years, we don't have that many complaints about quality. We have complaints when orders get screwed up, but even then it's it's not a, a huge issue. Okay. Um, oh, Lulian has some uh, has a response from TeePublic about getting in the listings. Make sure you have a profile image, a banner, a bio, social media links, and at least 10 designs in your storefront. So that that's, that's great. And that's pretty much in line with um, something else I'm going to say here in a second, which is, uh, I think I expect sites, and we've seen this with T Public. This is an example, but I think we'll see with Redbubble and others, they are going to be clamping down on you know rogue accounts that are just set up to spam crap across the the platform. And you know the best thing you can do is to be is to be genuine, is to which is kind of weird because I assume most of us are, but is to have original designs, to be a legit person, to have social media because you're a legit person. And just to basically look the the real deal, you know, people T public can tell if this design was designed by someone and this design was designed by someone else. You know, they can look at your account and see that you're a you're a fly by night or whatever. So yeah, play the rules the way they're meant to be played, and I think that's the the best uh, the best chance you'll have. Etsy are the best if you don't get your shop shut down. Yeah, um, yeah, Etsy have, Etsy have have been pretty strict as well this year. We had our account. Um, I can't remember what happened. I think we were put in suspension for a day because we had a really old design that they didn't like for some reason. Um, but yeah, Etsy can be strict as well. So we're seeing strictness increase across the board. Um, where was my comment on that? Okay, yeah, there I was. More restrictions on POD sites and platforms. So whether it's quality and also the IP issues, of course, I think we may see something like, um, you know, like you have verified... Twitter accounts and stuff. I think we may see something like that eventually with Redbubble or TeePublic. Um, they'll ask you to provide some ID. They'll ask you to jump through some hoops. Um, and they they may just refuse outright to, to host people's accounts anymore. And they'll be looking for quality, original artists they can work with over the long term, not just a, an open flat platform for anyone. So I think that's kind of where things are heading. Um, Abdus Salam says, Spot is good, but I can't use them for their shipping. I can't use them with other POD companies. Uh, Don, on Etsy, which product do you think is best? A lot of shops use lifestyle picks. A lot use the shirt only. Um, uh, it really depends. It depends on the niche. Depends on the market. There is no, you know, hard and fast rules on this stuff. It comes down to testing and trying stuff out. Um, most of my Etsy store, it's a, it's a mock-up of someone wearing the shirt, but you can only really see the design on the on the thumbnail. And then when you click through, you get the full model and stuff. And um, we use Placeit for those. Um, Ed, which T-shirt brand do you use? Bella and Canvas, for example. Bella and Canvas for definite. That's our, our standard T-shirt, the Bella Canvas 3001. Facebook user, do you use any paid advertising or Etsy? No, it's all organic. Okay, 
2021 predictions. Oh, well, let me see what. Yeah, okay. 2021 predictions, more restrictions on POD sites. Like I just said, I think if you are legit and you're playing by the rules, you're going to have a good time. If you're not playing by the rules, you're going to have a bad time. I think there'll be more product-focused brands from 2021 and beyond. So going back to the slide I had earlier, um, I was talking about Displate. They're like a what I would call a product-focused brand. Displate just sells metal posters. They're like these metal posters. It's a poster. It's metal. I don't know what else to say. It's a metal poster. That's basically all they sell. They don't sell T-shirts. They don't sell stickers. They just sell metal posters. And you can see the kind of growth they've been having um, over the last 12 months has been, been really good. Another site like them that just focuses on one product is Casetify. They just do phone cases. Um, it was Toby Fonseca who reached out to me and said, hey, I'm selling really well on this site. Uh, you might want to pay attention to it. So I'm not selling on there yet, but um, Casetify is another site like that where they have been growing like crazy and they just sell one product. They just sell phone cases. So I think this is something that we might see 2021 and beyond. Um, platforms and sites and print-on-demand sites, so the products are printed on demand, but they are becoming known for selling one thing and one thing only. And Display have done really well this year. They've done lots of social media advertising and stuff and influencer campaigns. Um, but I think things like that, like Display and Casetify, will probably see more of that. So keep your eyes on the ground. Um, keep your eyes peeled for, for sites and opportunities like that. And I do think we'll see um, big growth in fulfillment options. There have been a lot of new print-on-demand fulfillment apps on Shopify. I think we'll see more of that kind of stuff, maybe some consolidation there. Um, and I think personalization is still something I've been banging on about for a few years, but I think that's still a huge opportunity. Um, you know, there isn't a really an easy way for us to sell customizable designs. Um, Amazon have recently launched something, which I'll talk about in my email tomorrow. Um, but there aren't a huge number of options if you want to sell customized stuff. You can kind of do it with Etsy, but there's no real-time feedback. You can't do it with Redbubble. You can kind of do it with Spreadshirt. So I think that's a big growth opportunity as well. So I, um, yeah, I just think that's something that we'll see. And then 2021 wider trends, I think, like I say, there's room for new entrants, both around products and around communities. I think that's where you'll see the most growth because I think it's hard for Redbubble to really grow massively from where they're at. Um, and it's hard for anyone to challenge Redbubble because they are so massive. You know, if you're trying to set up a site or grow a site to challenge your Redbubble, it's really hard. Whereas if you focus on one product, it's actually relatively that much easier. I think we will see new personalized and customized products and tools. An example is those star maps, which you might have seen that are kind of really personalized. Um, that's the kind of thing I think we'll see more of. And I do think ideas count more than ever. I think the days of really low quality generic designs being listed across loads of high traffic, long tail websites, it's just going to be harder and harder. And this has been the case for years, but it, it just continues to be the case that unique ideas and strong, um, you know, strong, unique ideas for the right market is where you're going to find the most growth and, and have the most opportunities. So um, before I take questions and round this out, my advice would be get really good at something, get really good quality designs, because without that, you really can't jump over the bars that are going to be placed in your way this year. T Public are going to, you know, stop you from being seen. Redbubble are probably going to follow suit. So if your designs aren't really good, and by really good, I mean, you know, decent enough to challenge the best sellers on those kind of sites, then, um, then you're going to struggle. And find where you fit. How is, where is that market? Where are those people, that community that you're really going to design for and create for? More quality, that means more quality, less quantity. And no more, like I said, everything everywhere. And think people and products and then platforms. So I wouldn't worry so much about the platform. I would think first about the people you're serving. Who are they? How, how are you going to get to them? And then products would come second. So are you doing wall art? And in that case sell on Society6 and Display? Or are you doing T-shirts, then sell on Redbubble? And so, you know, just think of things in that order and blaze your own trails. I think it's never been easier and it will become even easier in 2021 to start your own brand, to, to sell reliably and to sell high quality, decent quality goods around the world and to get them in people's hands quicker 
Um, and I think there's, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity there. So it's never been easier and you can really do your own thing. You don't have to keep um, trying, trying, trying to sell on Redbubble or Merch by Amazon and, and seeing even diminishing returns. Maybe you've been doing great on Redbubble or Merch by Amazon for the past five years, but you're starting to see things level off a bit and it's becoming harder and harder. Starting your own thing and using print-on-demand fulfillment companies, I think, is a great a great path for people to go. And test, test, test. You need to play sample orders. You need to try things out. You know, there's no substitute for testing stuff. Okay. MyClassic.com forward slash win to win T-shirts and stickers. And let me take some more of your comments and questions here. Uh, learn hairdo. Where can I find your merch? So um, if you want to win these T-shirts, you can see on the screen and some stickers, there's three T-shirts. They're all size medium. And I have Michael Essick uh, stickers, vinyl stickers to give away as well. Going to be giving five lots of stickers away as well. If you go to michaelessick.com forward slash win, fill in the, uh, the form there, and then you will be entered into the prize draw. But if you want to uh, buy a Michael Essick T-shirt for some reason, um, you can get them on my Redbubble store. If you go to michaelessick.com forward slash RB, then you'll be able to buy the T-shirt you see behind me. You'll be able to buy that logo on various things. Um, the reason I point that out is that I don't um, take any royalties from that website. If you buy Michael Essick T-shirts or stickers or whatever, all the royalties from that Redbubble store, I donate to charity. Um, there's a particular charity based in Lebanon. We have some friends there who have been helping people rebuild over, after the explosion there this year. So if you do, if you don't want to sit around and wait for the, your chance to win a T-shirt, but you'd like to buy one, then you can buy one at michaelessick.com forward slash Redbubble and all the profits, all the royalties go straight to this charity um, that are helping people in, in Lebanon. So a kind of Christmas goodwill gesture there if you uh, if you want to get in on that. So michaelessick.com forward slash RB if you'd like to buy a Michaelessick T-shirt rather than win one. And while I'm here doing plugs, michaelessick.com forward slash book for the little book of T-shirt ideas if you don't already have a copy of that. Uh, 16 proven t-shirt idea formulas with over 150 unique examples and step-by-step -step instructions. And um, if you're interested in my ideas workshop course, which will be relaunching in January, then michaelessick.com forward slash ideas, you can go and sign up for that there. That will be opening again in January, and I'll share more on that uh, when we get closer to it. So I think we're going to have to wrap it up, but I will take questions here before we do. Peter, you mentioned that you recently tried a really good printer. Can you say who that is? Uh, Peter, I cannot. I'm afraid I am under a, a non-disclosure agreement. And um, until next year, I won't be able to uh, share any more about that. But if you are, um, let me go back to uh, this slide here. I, I should say, if you are selling, um, if you're using a print-on-demand fulfillment company like Printful or Printify or someone else, um, if you're using any print-on-demand fulfillment company and you're doing quite high volume, so... Let's say you're doing, I don't know, um, a thousand orders a, a month or something like that. Um, then do go and fill in that form and uh, make sure to point out that you're doing high volume. I think I asked that question in the survey, but um, make sure that you put your email in there. Make sure that you let me know that you're doing pretty high volume because I have, um, I have something, a project coming next year, which I think is going to be of interest to you. And I'm looking for people who are doing decent volume to help me test this new printer to put them through their paces and to see if they're um, if they're really the real deal, um, which I think they are. So if you're doing high volume and you're looking for a, an alternative print provider, um, do go and fill in that form at michaelessick.com forward slash win and make sure you put your email in there and I might reach out to you to help me, um, might reach out to set up a call so that I can help you with your business and maybe get you in touch with uh, this new print provider that I've been testing out. Okay, Barbara says Zazzle is huge on personalization. Yes, they are. Um, that's one of the few ones that is. Dr. Geronimo, can you talk a little bit about the different printing technologies, screen printing, whatever that is, advantages and disadvantages of them, and what we can do for good print quality? Um, I can't really. <laughs> you know, we, we're going to have to wrap this up here. But there's there's a lot of information on Printful and stuff if you want to look for how to get the best print quality via print on demand. Screen printing is um, is when you print, print inks, on a shirt, you literally hand 
well not sometimes they are hand sometimes they're not but it's uh, it's not on demand you usually have to do big bulk orders and high volume orders at a time so you can't do stuff on demand but i would recommend just kind of googling that and you'll find some more information on that kevin if we should be more mindful of what designs we post to wear cute and cuddly designs versus funny sarcastic designs what sites would you post to for each um, I'm not sure that's a distinction I'd make, Kevin. It seems like you're making a distinction there between cute, cute and cuddly versus funny, sarcastic. Um, I have cute and cuddly, <laughs> I have cute and cuddly designs, and I have funny, sarcastic designs, all under one Redbubble store, and they they all perform very well. So um, all of those kind of designs, you know, the list I gave earlier, Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, T Public, the list hasn't really changed at all this year. Uh, we've just seen some growth in others and and less growth on others, but uh, the list is pretty much static. So if you go to michaelessig.com, uh, scroll down, you'll see a link to my my post about the best print on demand sites, then um, that will give you give you information on those. Aiken, Akikan, Michael, please can you tell us what is your current tier in merch and what is the monthly profit from it? We need this info for inspiration. Uh, you don't need that uh, info for inspiration, Akikan, but I'm a 100K tier. And, um, you know, through merch and Rebel and everything this year, we will do uh, over a hundred and something thousand, probably, I think we're running about $130,000 or something for this year. But that's across, that's not just merch, that's everything. Merch, Red Bubble, um, and a few others thrown in there as well. So, yeah, um, that's a small, small beer compared to some of the big, Merch by Amazon and print on demand sellers. So I am by no means a uh, a, a monster in the space, but um, yeah, I, I would I, I would caution against though. Uh, you know, it's very easy for people to lie about. You know, I could come on here and say I'm making five hundred thousand dollars a day with Merch by Amazon. No one would really be any. The, it probably would be something the wiser. But I would say, um, yeah, don't don't be too beholden to numbers and stuff. Um, you know, even if you got a slither of, of progress or a slither of some of these websites, if you got 1% or less than 1% of the the selling designs on TeePublic, you would be making several hundred thousand dollars a year. So um, it's really not about, you know, chasing the numbers. It's more about finding that particular slice of the market for you. And um, I, I'm convinced that the with the right tools and with the right approaches, anyone can can carve out that slice for themselves. It won't necessarily be on Amazon. It won't necessarily be on Etsy, but you can certainly find, you know, um, the right slice for you given enough testing and effort. Facebook user, what themes do you think will be hot in 2021? I think I saw a slide that mentioned crypto. Yeah, I missed that one out. So um, let me quickly go through this slide. So uh, this was less about... Um, uh, trends. I, I don't really believe, you know, you see every year like design trends and design predictions. I don't really believe in those. I don't, or I don't think they're very useful, I should say. Um, but here are some opportunities that I think I would be exploring in 2021. Um, if you weren't already, or if you don't already have a plan for what you're doing in 2021. Um, crypto art has been very big this year. Th this is a, a graph showing searches for crypto art. <clears throat> um, if you don't know, Bitcoin has gone through the roof this year as well. Alongside that, crypto art is basically the selling of digital art for digital currencies. So Bitcoin and others. And um, and I think there's a big opportunity there. I think there's some overlap there with print on demand. I think it's a very big growth space. Um, I'm not doing anything there myself, but I would advise for those who have time on their hands or are exploring new opportunities to go and do some digging and research. And there are some artists making some very big money through crypto art right now. Um, digital goods. So we saw this year like Teespring launch the ability to sell digital goods. Um, I just think there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, this is a photo of the guy who created those iPhone icons when, when Apple first allowed you to change the icons on your iPhone. I think he sold uh, something like two hundred thousand dollars worth in twenty-four hours or something. Um, so I just think that th there's lots of examples like that where if you're if you're a good designer and you're quick on off the mark on on an opportunity, whether it be icons for iPhones or face masks or whatever it might be, if you're quick to the draw, you can really do well on that. Um, Giphy stickers. Giphy is you know they do the gifts and the stickers for Facebook Messenger and all that kind of stuff. 
I think there's there's opportunity there for for people to get exposure on their art through things like gifs and stuff. So if you're able to do even simple, really simple animations and stuff, and you're quick again, if you, if again you're quick off the mark with trends and stuff, I think there's opportunity there to build a decent brand around um, around things like that. And again, wholesale, which I mentioned before, and principles on Etsy has been big this year. So yeah, just some other opportunities for people to explore. Not necessarily what I think is going to be massive in 2021, but I think they, these have longer legs than that um, as well. Grey Elephant Club. It's been an amazing year of learning. Thank you. Happy holidays to all. 2021, here we come. Indeed. Thank you, Grey Elephant Club. Arthur says, what are you calling high volume? Um, I think I said about a thousand orders a month or more or something like that. So yeah, if you're selling a thousand on Etsy a month or, or via your Shopify store, um, and you're using a print-on-demand fulfillment company like Printful or something to, to fulfill, then um, that's the kind of what I would call high volume. Angie, thanks for today. Have a good Christmas. No worries. Amira, without being too personal, where can we print quality large stickers like yours for our brand? Um, I got mine through Sticker App, I think they're called. Um, Sticker App, and they're pretty cheap. I think I got something like 100 for £30 or something like that. Um, or Sticker Mule is another good one, I think. Otter Things, thank you so much. Lots of great information. Good luck to you all in 2021. Amen to that, Otter Things. GC Hustle, how to find an untapped trend. Um, you totally should have answered that, asked that question earlier. Um, yeah, I, ha I have a, a video about trends if you, you can, on my YouTube channel. You can go and check that out. Ed, would you advise to niche down if you start your own store? Yes, definitely. I, I would definitely recommend that. GC, is buying our own design help us get more results in Redbubble? No, don't buy designs. Uh, no, well, no, I don't think that, that helps on Redbubble. Uh, it certainly used to help on Merch by Amazon to tear up, but I don't think that helps on Redbubble. David said, thanks. No problem, David. Ron, thanks again for being such a valuable, incredible source. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Ron, and same to you. Uh, Otter Things says, I sell. Oh, okay, that was a reply to someone else. Don says, thank you. Barbara says, thank you, Michael. You've been so helpful and fun all year long. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay, so yeah, I think we will be rounding it up. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, Merry Christmas from me and from all my family. It's been uh, fun this year doing the live streams. Um, I can't remember really why I started doing the live streams again, but it, it's been worth it. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Um, thank you for all those who have purchase something from me this year, whether it's a book or a course or whatever. Um, I hope you've got good value from those. And um, I will continue to keep creating and doing live streams next year. I have some new products planned and some new updates to the course and stuff. So especially if you're interested in ideas, um, this is the place to be. And if you could, as my last request, go and fill in that survey. That would really help me to uh, get a good picture of what you guys uh, would really like to see from me in 2021 subjects you'd like me to tackle, topics you'd like me to talk about, um, any other advice or feedback or things you'd like to give me that would really be helpful um, so that I can review those over the Christmas break and uh, come back refreshed and ready to go in 2021. Um, so yeah, that would be great. I thank you all very much. Um, let's see here, a couple more comments come in. Jacqueline says, thanks. Bo says, thanks so much. Happy holidays. Uh, Dakar says, I purchased your very first course three years ago. Life happened and I didn't complete it. Is the info still relevant? Um, very first course three years ago. I think uh, more, some of the tactical stuff won't be that relevant anymore, but certainly the big picture stuff. And I did a lot in that course about ideas, which became the ideas workshop and has become that over time. So certainly stuff about coming up with ideas is quite a lot in that if you have access to that course, if you still have access to it, which would be uh, evergreen. I should say, evergreen value in that. So, so yeah. Arthur, thank you. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. Amira says, thank you, and thank you for all the info. I will spend time catching up on all the vids and looking forward to 2021. Thank you, Amira. Kevin says, thanks. Susan says, thanks. Or Sousa says, thanks for all the tips and happy Christmas. Uh, Don says, hit that like button. Thank you, Don. Yes, do subscribe and like if you haven't already. Um, Matthew says, where were the three wholesale options? Handshake, fair, and... Uh, Tundra, I believe, Matthew. But I will put these slides up. Um, I'll put these slides up on the um, on the link where you can get access to this as well. So if you go and go and do the uh, the survey at mycolastic.com forward slash win, then um, 
I'll, uh, I'll make sure later today or shortly after this video, I'll put a link so you can get the slides. Uh, Richie, thanks, Michael. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Jacqueline says Tundra. Yep, that's true. Matthew says thanks. David says have a good one. And Holloway says enjoyed your mentoring. I feel much better for it. Happy New Year. Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. All right. So I'll leave it there for today. Um, I'll be back in 2021. I hope you can join me there. Have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year. I hope you get to see your families and uh, do all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be taking an extended break for two weeks, trying not to think about work or anything at all. Um, so thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you in 2021. All right. Thanks, guys. Happy Christmas. Bye-bye.